What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a happy, healthy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And today I am going to do a 2023 review, review of what 2023 looked like for me and also sort of talk a little bit about um, the notion that I'm always positive or, or answer the question, am I always positive? Um, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of a rundown of all of the things that you might not see about me um, as a YouTuber because I know it's really hard sometimes when you look at somebody, especially somebody like me who's on YouTube showing people sort of how to do things uh, in a wheelchair and giving people um, ideas about how to live a positive life. It's easy to get the idea that I never have shitty days. Can we just acknowledge right now at the beginning of this video that I have something on my nose? Dry skin or something? And now we both know that I have something on my nose and we can now settle into watching the video knowing that we both know that I have something on my nose. I'll let you get back to it. Um, so I'm gonna go through sort of what's been going on sort of with me lately um, and then I'm gonna kind of go through a list of all of the things that I am able to do now and how long all of these things took me just in case somebody out there is comparing themselves to me. Um, and I've had a particularly like hard last like couple of weeks. So I'm gonna share some of that with you. So starting off with a review of 2023, um, I wanted to do this because I see so many people doing this and I see so many people going like, wow, like this is my 2023 and my 2023 was like amazing and I did all these cool, amazing things. And not everybody's 2023 is like that. Mine wasn't like that. I see some of my friends, Sarah, if you're watching, I see you just like exploding with success um, all through 2023. Um, if you don't know who my friend Sarah Foley is, go follow Vertical Blonde. Um, she is just amazing. She is in a wheelchair, um, is a public speaker, and is just killing it in the public speaking um, world. And she used to be sort of in fitness and then she pivoted to kind of really shine in her talents, which is public speaking. And now she's got a whole um, program that she teaches people. It's just crazy. She's, she's had a whole bunch of success in 2023. And sometimes when you look at, at other people's successes, it can make you feel really shitty about your life. And I'm here to tell you that you don't have to have, you know, stellar years every year in order for your life to be totally awesome. So here's my 2023 in review. Um, it wasn't like an amazing year. I basically just plugged along with the things that I was already doing. I did some cool things. I had some really cool experiences with my family. I made some memories and that's really uh, the important stuff, but I didn't make a bunch of money. I you know, wasn't super successful with my business. Um, all of the things that I see other people doing that are being like, man, I just like doubled my income or all of these things, especially in the um, world of YouTube or content creation. You see so many people doing all of these cool things, or at least I do, because I follow content creators. Um, you see all of these people doing really cool things with their businesses and you know, mine wasn't doing any of that. So here's my 2023 in review. Uh, if you guys remember, I did a fundraiser for my my friend Jordan, who has a rare terminal condition called GAN, um, and they, her family wanted to take her to Paris, so um, I was planning a fundraiser for that. So I did that. I worked on a project called the Concentric Project. I was a team lead for that, and it's basically a project um, that is trying to improve transitions and care for people with spinal cord injuries uh, from hospital to community. So I was a part of that as a person with lived experience and I helped lead um, a part of that research project, uh, which sounds more fancy than it really is. It was just a bunch of meetings where we had to discuss certain things. My specific thing was empowerment. My group was empowerment. Obviously, I, I have a channel on empowerment for people with spinal cord injuries, um, and we were trying to decide how to empower people to use the tools and resources they're given in the hospital um, to go out in the community and be effective with them. So that was, that was one of the things I did. Uh, I worked with Coloplast, a brand that I um, am partnered with, um, to put on a webinar about sex um, with a disability. So that was really cool. Uh, I worked with another brand, Permobile. If you guys have heard of Permobile, they are a big wheelchair brand. 
and I worked with them on a podcast about sex and intimacy. So you can go check that out. It's called um, Love and Disability, I believe. I will put a link to it in this, uh, the description of this video. So I did that. I worked with a brand called Get The Tea um, to promote some of their products that I was using a, a lot last year. Um, and I'm no longer using them as regularly, but um, they are a really cool company. So if you wanna check them out, I'll put a link in the, in the description of this video as well. So I worked with that brand. So I did some, uh, some cool things um, in the disability space and with my YouTube channel in terms of meeting brands. I got connected with um, Blake Medical, which is another brand that I'm working with more this year. Um, and we're gonna be doing some content. You can actually keep an eye out for a live that we're gonna be doing on cushions uh, and all about how to choose a cushion. That's gonna be February 7th. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I will put a link to the live as soon as I have it, but it won't be, I don't have it all scheduled yet. So um, just keep February 7th in your calendar. Um, there'll be a live sometime during that day, probably at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, um, which is what we are in now and usually when I do my lives, but I'm not entirely sure. But keep an eye out for that. So I'm working with that brand uh, and I made that connection last year in 2023. Um, I did a couple of podcasts with my friend, Fredo the Wheelchair Guy. If you don't follow him, he's amazing. He's such a cool person. We connect um, on a really um, cool level. I just think we're really similar people and we have really similar ideas, but also different ideas on some things. So we're similar in a lot of ways, but different in enough ways that it makes us have really great conversations when we are together on a podcast. So I joined him on his channel and on his podcast for a few, um, episodes. And then, um, I did a Walmart commercial. So remember that video where I went to, um, Vancouver and I couldn't tell you what brand I was working with while well, it ended up being a Walmart commercial and the commercial has since come out. I've never seen it. I have no idea where it is. Um, but I got paid for it. So that was really cool. I ended up being, um, in the commercial or in the, the print advertising. So I, I ended up getting paid, which is really cool because you go there not knowing whether you're ever gonna see any money for the modeling or the acting that you do. Um, and then and then I ended up I ended up being picked uh, as one of the people. Um, so that was really cool. Um, so if anybody out there sees a Walmart billboard or a Walmart commercial with my face in it, can you please send it to me? Because nobody that I know has seen it they send me the money, but they don't send you the like the actual thing that you're in, which is weird. So I that was cool. Um, I did a year of experiences with my kids, so they picked a I picked a different experience for them every month um, instead of Christmas gifts last year. So we did a year of experiences through 2023. So they we did a lot of different things. Um, we went to plays and we went roller skating and. A bunch, of, a bunch of different things, which was super cool. So we made lots of memories that way. I took my kids to Montana, which I've done many times. I went to a family reunion in the summer. Um, I did some cool things with my brand, just updating um, my brand identity, which I'm gonna continue doing in 2024, but I started that in 2023. Uh, and then obviously I got ready for Christmas and we did all Christmas stuff. Um, and then it ended with you know my, my New Year's Eve with my family. I entirely forgot to mention that I was also in a TV show all of 2023. Um, we filmed season two of Push during this last year and I was in that. So I don't know why I forget to mention that all the time because it's pretty cool that I'm in a TV show. So that was another thing that I did in 2023. So that was my 2023. Um, it wasn't like I had amazing amounts of success. I just sort of like plugged away at all of the things that I've been working towards um, and I didn't stop. And that's the key for me is that I, I kept going. Uh, and sometimes that's all you can really expect from yourself. Really, that's all you can expect at all from life. Like if you just keep going on something that matters to you and that means something to you, then that's really all that matters, right? So you don't have to see like huge success. And I think a lot of people give up on things because they're not like, eh, this isn't working. Well, if I said that about my YouTube channel, I wouldn't be making this video today because uh, I haven't made money on it. Um, I started making a little bit of money on YouTube uh, a few years ago, but it's definitely not you know enough to, for me to quit my job or for it to really make a dent in our family's finances. It's mostly just some like pocket change, 
which I'm so thankful for. And I'm just gonna take a minute right now to thank my Patreons because I started a Patreon and I wish I was more active on there. I promise I will be more active on there um, in 2024. But for all the people who have chosen to go over there and support me monetarily with even a small as $2 a month, um, I really appreciate it because it's your hard earned money and for you to hand it over to me so that I can keep making content that matters to people um, means a lot to me. So thank you so much for my Patreons, but I'm not making like a crap ton of money um, as a content creator, but I haven't quit. Uh, and that's, I think, um, I think that's, that's the goal for me is to just keep going and hopefully I can make a little bit of money and help people at the same time. So that's my goal. Uh, and I guess if that's my goal, then I achieved it in 2023. So that's my 2023 in review, made some memories, kept on going with my business and I didn't quit. So that's really good. Um, now I want to share some stuff about, you know, happiness and positivity. This is just a rambly video. So I apologize for anybody that's like watching. I was like, this video sucks. Well, you're just going to listen to me talk for the whole time. Uh, but I wanted to just have like a real, like, Hey, you're just like having a sit down with Brittany, um, video. Uh, I get really stuck in comparison a lot. And I know I just told you not to do that but I do do it a lot. Social media was really detrimental for me for many years because all I would do is look at other people and try and emulate what these people were putting out there on social media, which was always the best version of themselves. And so I thought I was failing if I wasn't always that best version. And I truthfully felt really shitty about myself for years. So I had to sort of like downplay my social media um, and not actually be on it so much, which is kind of sad because now I look back and I'm like, oh, I don't have as many pictures on Facebook for them to, you know, come up as memories or just for me to look at. But not being on Facebook and not trying to put all of my highlight reels on Facebook has been really um, awesome for me. And so I try not to do that um, in my content on here and I try not to do that on my social media just in general, just show all of like the happy stuff. Um, I need to be more active on social media um, just so I can show like, you know, the real, real sort of things that are going on in my life. But again, social media has sort of been a, um, a negative thing for me in the past. So it's a little, it's a little of a point of contention for me. I know I need to do it, but it's also kind of annoying. But back to the comparison thing, um, I, I just don't want anybody to ever think because I am active on social media especially YouTube, not, not the other things as much, that my life is really great and all the things that you see uh, me doing are really great. So like if you look at my highlight reel and you just take like a bird's eye view of my life and you just pick out all of the good things, you'll see that I'm married, that I have two kids, I went to university and I have a teaching degree, that I am a teacher now, that I'm on a TV show, that I have a YouTube channel, that I travel, that I do disability advocacy, that I know a lot about nutrition and that I can do a lot of stuff in my wheelchair independently. Um, and obviously I teach people how to do all the things that I can do in a wheelchair. So when you see like a highlight reel like that, you're like, oh my God, if, especially if you're first paralyzed, you're gonna be like, I'm never ever going to be as successful as this person. Uh, but what you don't see are all of the things that I had to struggle with in the background and all the years that it took me to achieve all of these things. Uh, and you don't see the struggles with mental health or any of those things that I deal with on a daily basis. So just to give you a little snippet of the things that you don't see uh, in a highlight reel, here's a few of the things that I struggle with. Uh, I am extremely disorganized. It is extremely, extremely hard for me to manage a YouTube channel and keep ahead of the content, edit the content, do all the things that you have to do for a YouTube channel. I just get, I squeak by with the bare minimum because I'm extremely disorganized. I am, that is my goal for 2024, is to find an organization system of, and make my time management um, something that I feel good about because right now I'm just like, Bleh. my husband calls me a squirrel because I'm just like, whoa, whoa, what am I doing now? What am I doing now? And I'm all over the place. And it is really, really exhausting uh, to be me all the time. So I don't know if I have like adult ADHD or I just need to be more organized because I can focus pretty well when I want to focus, but it's really exhausting. So I struggle extremely, extremely, extremely a lot with uh, organization. I have debilitating 
struggles with anxiety uh, from time to time. I will go years without having horrible anxiety, but then it will crop up. This last month has been horrible. We are getting ready to go to Mexico pretty soon. And I have never had more anxiety about going on a trip. I keep having like these awful thoughts about me having a medical emergency on the plane and that I'm gonna like be embarrassing to my family and that I'm going to have to literally like ground the plane, like just ridiculously awful um, worrying thoughts about um, going to Mexico uh, and especially about my body. I have like weird breathing things and I get way too conscious of my breathing and then I feel like I can't breathe and it's just like super annoying. Um, and so I've had a real struggle with anxiety all through Christmas and I've just had to sort of like plug away and keep doing the things that I, I know I can do and keep telling myself that the anxiety isn't going to take over my life and all of these things. And it gets really exhausting when I have anxiety like this because for years I struggled with anxiety to the point that I went to the hospital like once a month probably thinking that I was like dying. I embarrassed my family. Joe had to leave so many events, so many places that we would go um, to visit family. We would have to leave because I was having a panic attack. He would have to take me to the hospital sometimes because I was convinced that like something was actually wrong. Um, just so many things um, that I've experienced with anxiety that I don't want to come back. And so once I have bouts of anxiety like this, I get in a really negative headspace about, you know, my future and about the kind of burden I am to my family. And believe it or not, mental my mental health struggles are way more worrying to me about me being a burden to my family than my physical disability. Like I would take a physical disability any day over mental health struggles because anxiety sucks so bad. Um, and the fear of fear is like something out of this world. You can't even, it's like, I can't even describe it. It's just the, the fear of being afraid. I'm afraid of having an anxiety attack. And then the fear makes me more worried about the anxiety attack. And then like the anxiety just takes over and then it's just bizarro. So that is something that you guys don't see all the time because obviously I'm making this YouTube video. I'm not like, having a panic attack right now, but it's something that I have to, to deal with. And I do cognitive behavioral therapy. I have an appointment with a hypnotherapist on Friday. I'm going um, to see a myofunctional therapist to get my breathing under control. I do something called Bateco breathing, which is like a breathing technique to calm your nervous system. Like there's just so many things that I do um, on my own time and in order to manage my anxiety that you guys don't see. Uh, so if you guys are like struggling with your mental health, don't look at me and be like, oh, she's always so positive. It takes a lot of work to be able to manage these things. And sometimes it can be downright exhausting, but you got to do it. Otherwise, you know, it just gets worse. And so um, I don't want you guys ever to think that I don't have those struggles because I definitely do. So disorganization, I have horrible anxiety sometimes. Um, I struggle with self-doubt all the time. I constantly feel uh, insecure. I constantly feel like I am inarticulate. I say like on this channel all the time, which people have pointed out. And if I just like quit every time somebody pointed out something that I am not good at, then I wouldn't have a YouTube channel. And I think that the information that I wanna share is more valuable than the ums and the likes and the, all the things, the filler words that I'm gonna use. So I keep making these videos and you guys keep watching them, which gives me confidence and makes me keep coming back. So thank you guys for keep keeping on coming back and showing up because it really makes me feel like what I have to say is valuable. And that gives me more confidence and um, it allows me to dispel the self-doubt that is constantly in the back of my mind. Um, the other thing that I struggle with is getting overwhelmed a lot. That again comes back to disorganization because I'm just disorganized. Um, and that is something again that I'm going to try and work on, but I get overwhelmed a lot. I have a lot of self doubt, um, totally disorganized, lots of anxiety. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to share is just like the things that you don't see or the years that it took me to do all these things. So with that, I am going to share my list of things that it, I can do now and how long each of them took me to do. Okay, so we'll start with, I chunked them into like when I accomplished each of these things. 
Um, and how, like sort of the, the mile marker, the year marker, um, when I accomplish these things. So here we go. How long did it take me to do all of these things uh, that I can do in a wheelchair? So five years. So it, the first five years of my injury, I could not do anything. I could not do anything for myself. I'm talking about like personal care, physical things. I couldn't do anything. So it took me five years in a wheelchair, five whole years. That's a lot of years to be able to cath in a bed, couldn't even cath in my wheelchair, I could cath on a bed, to do my own bowel routine, to transfer to a toilet with supports. So I used to have like toilet arms that uh, bracketed to the back of the toilet and I could transfer on and off the toilet with those only. Um, then I had, uh, and it took me five years to transfer to a shower uh, with a sliding board. So I could transfer to a shower with a sliding board. I could get dressed on my own. Uh, and I could put my own shoes on and I learned to drive after five years because I didn't learn to, I didn't learn to do any of these things until I moved out of the house. So I was 13, almost 14 when I was paralyzed and I moved out of the house at almost 19 and it took me five years and basically almost to the day of when I moved out. Well, actually even longer because my mom moved in with me for a month. Uh, when I moved out of the house and it took me like that entire month to learn how to do everything independently and then she left and went home um, And then my boyfriend moved in with me, which is like a whole nother story But five years it took me to do all of those things calf do bowel routine transfer to a toilet transfer to the shower Drive get dressed put my shoes on all of that stuff five years couldn't do anything uh, for the first five years then after seven years I learned not learned. I started driving alone because I could drive, but I was not confident enough to drive anywhere alone, not even in the city I lived in at all. So I would not drive alone. So after seven years, I finally, finally got up the courage to drive alone. I went out in public alone for the first time after seven years. It took me seven years to go anywhere in public by myself. Um, and it took me um, seven years to learn how to calf in my wheelchair because it was really hard for me when I started university. Um, to run home and cath on the bed. So I wanted to learn how to cath in my wheelchair. Thank you to my friend Margaret, who's been on here many times. She's the one that taught me how to cath in my wheelchair. And I've been doing it ever since. So it took me seven years to be able to do those things. Then it took me 10 years to be able to transfer to a couch because I couldn't transfer to a couch before that. We just was not strong enough at my transfers. It took me 13 years to fly alone. I flew alone for the first time with my daughter who was like, you know, maybe two years old at the time. Um, and uh, I went to visit a friend in, or my cousin in Montana um, and I flew back with her by myself. So it was just a short flight. It was like an hour or something like that. But that was the first time I actually flew alone without you know, another responsible adult. Um, it took me 13 years to learn to transfer to a toilet without those support arms. It took me 13 years um, before I could put shoes on that weren't super easy. So I had like one pair of shoe, one, one sort of type of shoe that I could put on and that was all I could put on until 13 years later, I learned how to put more shoes on, different types of shoes. Um, and it took me 13 years to learn how to sit up in a bed without like a bar. Like I used to have a, um, a rail that I had hooked to my bed and I could sit up with that. Uh, but after 13 years, I finally learned how to sit up in a bed um, just using my own body and the sheets or however I can get up in bed now. But I use my butt. I put my hands under my butt and I sit myself up that way. Uh, and then I spent a lot of years, um, 13 to 19, so 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, six years, another six years. I kept all of those things up. I could do all of those things. Um, and there were still lots of things that I couldn't do. So after 19 years, here's some stuff that I finally learned how to do. So this time I traveled alone, entirely alone, not with my daughter, not with anybody, just by myself. That was the first time, 19 years being in a wheelchair and I finally traveled alone, 19 years uh, and I could finally drive long distances alone. I wouldn't drive long distances anywhere uh, alone because I was scared of gassing up. I didn't know if I was gonna get to where I was going and be able to get in and out of my car fine. I wouldn't stay in a hotel by myself. That was the first time I ever traveled entirely alone. Um, 19 years, uh, and after 19 years, I exercised in a gym for the first time all by myself. My camera is going to stop recording, so I have to stop for a second. There we go. 
Um, 19 years before I could exercise in a gym. And the reason that I didn't exercise in a gym by myself before that was because A, I didn't think I could exercise because of my level of injury. And um, B, I just, I thought everybody was going to look at me and I didn't know how to use any of the equipment in the gym. I just didn't want to be awkward and conspicuous. So I didn't do it. Uh, it took me 19 years to learn how to transfer to a shower without a sliding board. So the shower transfers that you see on this channel where I just transfer kind of like a 180 into the shower, couldn't do that uh, until about five years ago. Um, it took me 19 years to learn how to do a floor to wheelchair transfer. The working out helped with that. It took me 19 years to learn how to transfer to a vehicle. I had never ever transferred to a vehicle independently. I'd always gotten lifted into a vehicle. Um, and again, the working out helped with that. Uh, it took me 19 years to learn how to put my own wheelchair into a vehicle. So the transfer and the breaking down my uh, wheelchair to get into my rental car that I have on my channel just a few videos ago, couldn't do that until about five years ago either. Uh, and it only happened because I needed to get a new vehicle and I rented a car in the meantime and I learned how to do it um, while I was renting that vehicle because I came right out of the hospital as a teenager, not needing to drive, my parents always lifting me. And then once I learned how to drive, I got a lift in my van. So I never had to break my own wheelchair down or transfer into a vehicle. Um, so it took me a really long time to learn how to do that. Uh, it took me 19 years to try hand cycling, sit skiing, any recreational activities like that because I was scared of the transfer. And again, the working out helped with that. Uh, it took me 19 years to get the confidence to try bumming up a set of stairs. I have lots of friends that they do that right out of the hospital, just trying to get into places and uh, in inaccessible areas. And I never did that because I've always just relied on people to lift me. Um, so that's sort of a list of things. That was the last thing, bumming upstairs. So there's a lot of list of things that I can do now. I can cath, I can do my own bowel routine, I can transfer to a toilet independently without supports. I can transfer to a shower without a sliding board. I can transfer to a vehicle. I can break my chair down to get it into that vehicle. I can drive, I can travel alone. I can go to hotel rooms by myself. I have the confidence to do a lot of things independently because I am now comfortable with uncertainty. I can do all of the transfers I need to from the floor to my wheelchair. I can work out in a gym. I can hand cycle. I can transfer into a sit ski. I can transfer into other recreational equipment like the Volt hockey chair that I, um, that I was getting into when I was playing Volt hockey last winter. Um, there's a lot of things that I can do as a wheelchair user, but they didn't all come easy and they didn't all come fast. And I think the story of my life is really just being a slow learner and not giving up when I put my mind to something. And I think that's really all you need in life if you wanna be successful at anything. Uh, and then really just managing my mindset and managing my expectations with my mental health because I get very overwhelmed very easily. And if I don't give myself grace and rest and um, just the time to sleep and do things that make me happy and you know things that just aren't always pushing towards some goal I will get very very stressed out and I'm I don't know whether that will ever change with enough um, I don't know personal development but maybe it won't maybe it will I just have to try and decide what I want for my own life and right now what I want for my life is to con continue doing something meaningful which I believe this YouTube channel is meaningful I want to help people feel better about themselves and less shitty about themselves because I I can tend to feel shitty about myself when I look around on the internet and I see all of these like highlight reels so I want to be vulnerable and honest and real on this channel and show you that life isn't always perfect. You don't always have, you know, the most amazing mental health and you just keep plugging away even though that shit is happening. I know I'm going to be fine when I go to Mexico. I might have a panic attack on the plane, but I know I'll be fine. Um... And I'm gonna do everything I can to manage my anxiety up to that point. And the rest is really just prayer, breathing, meditation, 
mantras, all the things that help me get through this life. Um, and I wish that I was one of those people that just didn't have an overactive brain, that didn't have anxiety, that didn't have a disability, but I do and I can't do anything about that. And if you focus on the fact that you don't want those things and you hate having those things, which I do sometimes, ask my husband, ask Joe, whenever I'm sick, I get super, super, super angry that all he has to do when he's sick is lay around and worry about getting better. And yet I have to worry about how much I'm gonna drink. And sometimes I'm peeing my pants and I get really bad nerve pain when I'm sick and all these extra things that I think are just like unfair. So I can get real complainy uh, real fast when I'm sick or when things go sideways that way. Um, but I, you know, you come out of it and that's really all, all that anybody can ask you to do. I feel like it's just like riding waves in an ocean. Like there's always gonna be rough water and we can try and change the weather. We can wish the weather was not stormy and that the waves weren't getting like, you know, pushed up or that the waters weren't getting rougher, but we can't do anything about that. So the best we can do is learn to ride those waves and learn to manage our emotions through all of that rough shit because it can be, even harder to deal with if we are sitting there and trying to berate ourselves for feeling like shit when we're feeling like shit. So don't do that. Just, you know, plug away and then hopefully you can ride the wave and come out of it. Um, anyway, this was a super rambly video, but I wanted to make this video for a while and I don't know if it's going to help anybody at all. Um, but if somebody's watching and they watch this video and they feel better about their 2023 because my 2023 wasn't stellar, uh, and they feel better about their 2024 because it doesn't have to be some grandiose thing that you are planning. It just can be, you know, I want to keep going, uh, put one foot in front of the other and try to be more positive every day. That's a great, you know, thing for 2024 for me. I'm gonna work on my health because I have horrible digestion right now. My rosacea is back, like so, so bad. Um, so I obviously have some work to do on my health, my gut, my liver, my skin. I have a lot of things to work on um, and I'm gonna plug away at that. I'm not gonna be perfect at it uh, and I'm not going to, you know, I don't know, make some grandiose goal that I'm never gonna eat sugar again or any of that stuff, but I am going to make small changes that add up. And hopefully when I do a you know 2024 review, I can show you guys that my skin is healed, that my health is better, uh, that my anxiety is lessened, um, and that I've kept plugging away on my business, which is the goal. Um, Cause at the end of the day, I really enjoy hanging out with you guys, even though I'm mostly just talking to myself. I feel like I'm talking to you though, and I hope that's what it feels like when I'm talking to myself um, in this little camera. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful 2024. I am going to shut up now and let you guys get to your day. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, honestly, you guys um, have changed my life in so many ways just by being here, just by being you, and just by taking the time to comment, to watch, and to make me feel like I have something worth saying. So thank you for that. Happy New Year. I will catch you back here real soon on another video. Bye guys.